Yeah, and I'm already excited. We do have our first matchup for today. It's Pink Mist versus Baboon Gang. Pink Mist actually beating out Frenchies. That was a team that, you know, before the broadcast even started, we're sitting here thinking, okay, it's going to be Frenchies versus Baboon Gang. That will be a nice matchup. We've seen Mr. Brady and the rest of the Frenchie squad before. We've seen Baboon Gang along with, you know, Fanatics or, or Gagoon. We've seen Zestro on a different team in last months. And now they're going up against Pink Mist and not who we thought they were going to be going up against in Frenchies. But, of course, this team, they do have some players out there that we've seen before. I mean, Ruggy early boy we've seen them they haven't made it as mm -hmm. deep into these cmgs before but of course they are still stepping up they're making some plays let's go ahead and take a look at the maps that we're going to be seeing here game number one coming through on hollows number two will be the strikeout of course and that will be on windward and then if needed we'll go to demolition once again on canals and i like this map set right we have windward which is kind of balanced between the two especially on a map a game mode like strikeout we have hollows on demolition a little bit close quarter combat lots of twists and turns and then of course canals long sight lines oh yeah yeah it's gonna be gonna be a lot of action on this one gonna be a whole lot of action on this one you know hollows it's a newer map a lot of people still figuring out how to play it what the exact best comp is going to be for that map on each side but teams are starting to figure it out now so now we get to see hollows at a little bit better of a pace and it's gonna be interesting to watch man so i'm excited for map one yeah, the, the best thing about Hollows from what we've seen in the past CMGs, I, you know, it's only been in there for four weeks now. So the entire month of May, Hollows, Glacier, they were added into there. And the thing about Hollows is, you know, some maps were always like, oh, this is very defensive sided. This one's very attack sided. With Hollows, from the matches that we've seen on it, you know, besides the right Turtle Cute Hamster matchup in the grand finals last week, where it went to 7 7, it's mainly been one sided. You know, it's either an 8 0 stomp on the offensive side to begin with or or 7-0 on that defensive side to start off with so it's whichever team kind of just gets the feel for it to begin with and, and kind of gains that momentum going through that's really what has been the case for this map and you know it's looking interesting but we're gonna see now these rogues that are coming through rome what are you expecting to come through because like you said composition still up in the air on this map Yes, compositions are definitely up in the air, but one thing that I will say about Hollow's Demolition on offense, you need intel, whether it's one rogue or two, uh, you need intel characters. You're definitely going to need either a Seeker, Talon, Dallas, or even a Glitch. Now, Glitch was not banned. We have Anvil and Fixer that were the two bans. Uh, Fixer, obviously, is the guy that can see through all the smoke, so the smoke plays aren't going to be nearly as effective. So this is going to be interesting. I'm going to be surprised to see what uh, what rogues are going to be coming out uh, from this offensive side intel wise because if there's a lack of intel then that means that this team is going to be able to play a lot of rat corners up close they're going to be able to hug walls with c4s and really be able to uh, take advantage of that yeah anvil and fixer of course being two characters with c4s in their kit so those won't be available you still have town you still have saint like you said intel you can get track arounds with saint you can also use that radar dart from talon they both have c4s available for those little you know corner peaks kind of stretching out those corners without having to really use your guns in that fight or having to over peak or over take yourself out of position as so to speak but you know something else that is interesting that we look at these bands anvil and fixer yes fixer is very strong so we see that band a lot of times but also, if you go back once again and you look at the hollow games that we've seen, no matter if it was Demolition or Strikeout, Anvil, Fixer, those are staples in the compositions. You said they're still trying to figure out. A lot of teams are still trying to you know, figure out what exactly works on this map. Fixer, Anvil, they have been in almost every composition example that we've seen. Uh, I mean, we've seen them on defense. We see them on offense. You can go back to last week as well. Right Turtle versus Cute Hamsters in that grand finals. It went to 7-7, and they used an anvil on offense and defense from Right Turtle. Slopadopoulos playing that on the defensive side for Cute Hamster. Inc. was playing the anvil as well. They didn't bring it on on the offensive side because they elected to go a little bit more flashbang heavy with the health pool from the Rage coming out from the Chalk. But, you know, the, the bands were a little different. They still had fixed are available they used a lot of kestrel they used a lot of different rogues that could get them through that shield and when i say through that shield i don't mean technically shooting through the shield you got anvil who can get shredder rounds on the defensive side and ink so you know he can start shooting the shield as soon as it goes up but also kestrel drones can go around it they use the 
They've been using Ronan a lot, or I don't know if they'll be using it this week from Cute Hamster just because Ink isn't in that lineup. We did see Gronky play it one time in a strikeout last week, but that was only because they had the chalk as well, and the chalk was being give, given to Ink. But, you know, Gronky, he was their chalk player before Ink. So, you know, will we see the chalk go back to Gronky? Will Highlight be playing it? He's a notable chalk player as well. It'll be interesting. But going back to this matchup that we're watching, just waiting for this to start. We had a little bit of a hiccup there for a second, but no need to worry, ladies and gentlemen. We have that match coming at you very soon. I mean, Pink Mist, Ruggy, Early Boy, do you see any of these guys being those top fraggers, playing those very aggressive roles? You know, Anvil usually wants to play a little bit safer because he has to stay alive he's no longer in the question will we see some chocks here on hollows will we see those t- aggressive style dallas players with that hrm maybe sit back with the devos what kind of intel aggressiveness are we going to see here you know personally on offense i'm a fan of glitch i love padded step characters i feel like on this map lancer on defense is a great padded step character um, she's able to get around uh, three different ways. Uh, you can flank through middle. You can flank through um, through the quick uh, the quick route through the middle tunnel. Uh, you can also flank the long way through B side from the defense. So Lancer is going to be a solid pick, and it looks like Squashy is going to be locking in the, that Lancer. Um, now the only intel that's going to be on offense is going to be early boy on the seeker. They are going to have the chalk, so they are going to be flashbang heavy. So it looks like this is going to be an aggressive offensive comp met by two padded steppers on defense in Gagoon and Squashy. This is going to be interesting. Yeah, I want to go back to your glitch comment because I enjoy watching glitch as well. For those of you who have been watching the broadcast for a while, you know, Kresnik, he gives me a little hard time because I want to see a lot of glitch play. I want to see a lot of Dima play. We do have – we do – you know, we've been getting this glitch play as of recently. He's gotten a little bit better. His kit, of course, able to pull out that iPhone or that – uh, you know, that little EMP device, even after he used it. I mean, I know you're a fan, <laughs> Rome, because we watched you play it two weeks ago. Oh, yeah. When you played oh, for yeah. Best Kudu. We saw it on Factory. You played it on offense and the de- or the offense and the defensive side for Best Kudu when you went up against Consul's Finest. But we're jumping into the game here, and I'm just enjoying watching this. We've got the chalk on the offensive side. Of course, we have the Dahlias coming out. Those are pretty much the staple. No Kestrel on the attacking side which means that Baboon Gang's Dahlia can link to that Kestrel, get some extra money in those earlier rounds. That can become a vital thing later because if she starts to get some knocks with that Kestrel link in the first two or three rounds, maybe even four, if she wants to stretch it, she can get Lifeline pretty early, of course. She can get her MXR or her Objection, whichever one she goes with on the primary side. She can get those very early. She can also get Tenacity. She can just start to build her kit even faster than a Kestrel can at some times if she's getting a lot of knocks when the Kestrel isn't. But very early on here, we see them moving towards this B site. And this is very surprising because it's very open. You do see the smoke come through. And that was something I was going to note. If you don't have a lot of smokes or you don't act fast on that pistol round because you're only going to have one or two smokes coming out from the Dahlia and the Lancer, then, you know, the B site pretty much gets squashed if you can't get picks. And speaking of picks, early boy, he's the early boy going down. Gagoon and Squashy, they team up together for that one. You have those two kind of going through that middle section, but one gets taken down, two gets taken down. Dead face finding Squashy. Ruggy was there to help him out as well. And now the two final members for Baboon's gang. Just sitting in that top area, they can flex towards B or A, but the offense in full control right now. And the Rage going to be popped, but he is going to be taken down the second that he climbs up. Now the Vi sitting in the opposing Vi poison, only 20 HP able to beam Welsh, but is going to be taken out to go down in the first round on offense. Yeah, that was some good play from Zestro there, being able to finish off those kills. And like I said, Zestro on the defensive side, two downs for him, I believe. And that's the Dahlia player. He was playing support for, I believe, Consul's Finest in our last month's 10K. So he's just used to playing that Dahlia. And now here we have him once again. And, And he just didn't do as well to start off, but... He links up, gets the job done, and now Welsh Mania's got a lot of money in the bank. Link into that Kestrel here in round number two once again. He's got to have Lifeline and his MXR. And if he doesn't, I'm a little disappointed. But I expect him to have both right now, especially 
with the amount of damage he was putting in in that last round. Good recovery from them as well. They did end up getting the first pick. Then they went down two, but they were able to clean up one to make it an even 2v2. Lancer just sticking around this B site very early on. I think she did gather some intel. And the offense starting to move towards that B site once again. It looks like they want to play that a little bit more heavily early on than we're used to seeing. And again, not every team's figured out this map. Yeah, and the big issue that they're running into right now, if you guys paid attention to the first round, when the Chalk and the Dahlia were pushing B long to try and take over the B site, they were pre-flashing out for the Lancer, they were checking all their corners for the Lancer, and they wasted a lot of util just playing for a Lancer that wasn't even there. So just having a Lancer on the map not even showing herself can make a team do exactly what they just did in this round, which is rotate away from the B site and say, you know what, it's easier to watch our flank if we go A, and it looks like one player is going to be going down as that's OZ getting taken out by Gagoon. The trade is going to be coming in on Welsh. And that is going to be the Dahlia down with the Chalk down as well. And right now the Lancer is going to be coming in flanking. And she is going to be able to pick up a kill on Dead Faces. Yeah, you know, those two kills coming through did make it an even 3v3. Bounce name coming into the cave, but being shot from the side. Zestro, once again, Gagoon was able to help him out to finish off that pick. And now with only three seconds, they still have not been able to get a bomb plant. Can they do it in the last few seconds? They do finally get that bomb down. But now he's kind of playing just off his back foot. He's by himself. That's one con and also he does have the bomb planted in a spot where he can see it but he doesn't want to peek too early good patience from him just waiting for someone to get on that bomb he's gonna have to challenge this vi here does get one shot onto him but zestro once again finds another way to win a gunfight zestro usually that support player playing the vi which i guess you could see as sort of a support type role can get helping hand but mainly just the space creation and the space deletion coming out from the vi with the you know the incense grenade the the vi poisons just 100 overall her entire kit she can get to just so much space being created rome Yes, and, and the important thing is that they're keeping map control on this defensive side. And the offense right now, they're running into the issue that I already spoke about, and that's lack of intel. Right now, their only intel is that bow, so they have to figure out which lane they want to use that bow on. And if they don't reveal anything, they still have no idea where the Lancer is. Even if you do bow, the Lancer could be in her ult, so you might have just not seen her. There's a lot of risk banking on just a seeker bow as your intel and right now this defensive squad is punishing it as you can see this lancer already getting position on the a site and she's just going to be setting up for a flank while her team is uh, going to lock down this b site lock down the b site indeed this time kestrel playing off the box here in the corner they did have lancer set up in kind of that little kitty corner to the left of the kestrel here that hasn't worked out it, it kind of did last round they all rotated towards that a site but the smokes are now coming out which means kestrel's gonna have to reposition nice flashbang hitting the backside there that got three members of the defense and with a smoke and a flashbang like that you're able to get a bomb planted very nicely. First poison hit the wall. Wasn't able to go where they wanted, but nice shots coming out from Ruggy here. Welsh did find Uzma, but he will use his self revive from the rage there, which I guess is is awesome because he didn't have to rage up to go in for the bomb plant. Zestro does end up falling, only two members standing. Luckily, though, it's a Dahlia with the person that she's linked to. So you do have that to your advantage on the defensive side. But speaking of the defensive side, early boy finally gets his revenge as he's able to get a kill there. And, you know, he's been picked off pretty early here to start each round. This time, matter of revenge for him. Only one member standing, bomb ticking away. It is going to go off. And finally, a round for the attacking side goes their way. Yeah, that round, they were a lot more decisive. They said, look, we're going to be, we're going to do it fast, and we're going to do it our way, and that is what you need to do on this map. You can't just wait around. Those first two rounds, they were very slow getting to that B site, and then both times they realized this isn't going to work. 
and that time they went fast and it worked out for them. So it's going to be interesting. Are they going to adjust? Are they going to go back to B and do it fast yet again? Or are they going to go and try to go A, where this Lancer just felt extremely comfortable pushing through red off rip that they have no idea about? Yeah, and the Lancer, you know, like I mentioned earlier, was playing in that little kitty corner on B. I like having the Kestrel there instead. Yes, she got pushed out with the smokes, but just being able to have Lancer push through red as fast as she did or just, you know, condition them for it. Look at her already going up on top of porch, going through the back. Shots being hit towards the back of Kestrel. Now she finally makes a way out and look who it is once again zestro finding himself another kill onto dead faces meanwhile kestrel getting crossfired now zestro wasn't able to protect him and early boy finally starting to make some noise another poison goes awry for zestro and ruggy was able to take out gagoon early boy finds zestro once again and like i was saying early boy starting to make an impact and a very large one at that in these last two rounds squashy comes around that was a large flank a pretty long one, but he's finally there, able to find one. It is only a 2v2, so it kind of did even itself out. One revive did come through as well, and now a bounce nade kind of to stop that rotation from the defense. And it looks like they're going right to be able now. to go towards that A site and get a bomb planted. Oh, and that's a beautiful down on Squashy. And now this Dahlia is going to be trying to save her teammate. Going to need to dodge the Molly. Is going to be finishing off the Lancer. And early boy is going to wide swing that angle as he knew she was low. And even this thing up two to two. And I love that play. You don't expect them to have that incend grenade just because it's a chalk and it's a seeker left alive. They were able to pick up the incend off of a dead Zestro Vi. And because they had that, they could keep that momentum in their favor yes the dahlia being welsh was able to get a pick or get it down to make it a 1v1 was going to go for that revive onto lancer with lifeline in the pocket it would have been very quick efficient and also the regen on the health would have started immediately for the lancer there but at the same time i mean that momentum was just kept because chalk was able to throw an incend and, and that's just the the big part of going down early if you still have most of your kit like your throwables your utility your lethals they can be taken from you by the enemy and used against the rest of your team so do you want to use them too early no but you have to be able to not die in a, a situation where that can become theirs 100 percent. and right now it looks like there's going to be no cute business it looks like nobody is going to be flanking on this defensive side and that's because his offensive team is going to be pushing through back yellow tractor as three we haven't seen this before this is an interesting strategy but now squashy is going to be able to take out dead faces we got ourselves a 3v3 and they're all trapped at the back tractor area not sure where they're going to be going from here as they are able this to take out squashy push here and it looks like it's gonna work out as they down two and now it's only Zestro alive. He's gonna have to pull off a miracle. That's not gonna be the case as that shock is gonna be taking him out. And that's three in a row for this offensive squad. Big plays coming out of them. Yeah, it was a very interesting push, but I like that uh, that aggressiveness from them. I, I said, you know, this map, it's one of those maps where it's kind of been one-sided from all the times that we have seen it. A little bit of a small sample size. It's starting to grow week by week, match by match, now that we're getting to see it more and more, obviously. But we haven't seen an aggressive push like that at all on the attacking side throughout all of our time watching demolition i mean strikeout of course we've seen some aggressive pushes just because it's strikeout you want to get aggressive most of the time from what we've seen uh, out of some successful teams in strikeout like right turtle early on in last month cute hamster later in last month's tournament but this time around they straying away from that a site we saw a kind of a, a fall off the map glide off the map kind of thing that we used to see on things like skyfell and, and canals you get the please wait kind of throw off the enemy team didn't move towards a but look at this lancer Ooh, i was about to say yep. already on the flank here playing it a little bit and slowly there. but does the enemy know that she is there they, no they don't the lancer like hasn't shot a bullet idea. yet 
The Lancer's just calling them out. This is great plays by the Lancer. And now the Lancer's gonna take out the Dahlia, the Rezzer, that is genius, and gonna stick her, make sure she dies. That is a great Lancer play. Now they have to spend their whole time playing for this Lancer in the back of the spawn. Vi is gonna be able to take out one. The Lancer's gonna pick up another kill on Early Boy, and now it's only the Chalk left in his spawn with the bomb down, and this is gonna be all she wrote. And this Lancer just went absolutely insane. Squashy making the plays right now is gonna be able to take out Oh my goodness, that was just an amazing Lancer play. Love the Lancer plays. Yeah, it was a great, great, effective and efficient pick on the flank there from Lancer. Squashy knew exactly what he needed to do. Just be patient. And that's something I've stressed over the last couple of weeks is the patience that some point. players have. Gronky, notably one of those who has that ability to just stay patient, wait for all of the intel to come through. You know, usually... Rome, if you're playing in a ranked game or, or some of the earlier games of some of the teams that aren't too familiar with the competitive side of Rogue Company uh, at this time, he, they see one person run past them and they're thinking, oh man, you know, they start drooling at the mouth saying, I can get this pick right here. But instead, Lancer said, you know what, I'm going to be patient, wait for the rest of the callouts from my team, see if they can gather some more intel, wait to see if anyone else runs past me. Oh, look, there's the Dahlia. I'm going to take care of her stick her with the Semtex to make sure that she's not able to get picked up. They can still have Lifeline out of the Seeker. I doubt he has it in round number five, but it's still a possibility, but it's still better to take out that Dahlia with the ability to res someone quickly and efficiently from just the ability, not being able to take a gun out of the fear Seeker all the way in the back towards the spawn on the attacking side still. And look at Welsh playing towards that kitty corner, but a little bit shifted towards the doorway in a different area this time around. Not to give away his position too easily, but also to have two different angles if he is to put a gun onto someone. You do hear some shots right now. Looks like mid the rage up. Looks like the bomb will that try bomb. to be planted here. Yeah, and and I like I like how they did it. They used the vi poison to keep them off. For that, have people watch over and they smoked off the other side, planted behind, and were able to get out with all four players. And now it's going to be about what's better the retake or the hold. The Lancer is going to be looking to flank right now, and she's going to be picking up dead faces yet again. And now all three of them are going to be in this long alley, and this might not be good for them as they're going to get double taken out. And this Lancer is being a menace to them right now. Yeah, rounds four, five, six, it's looking like the squashy show. I mean, that was a great Semtex as well. He gets not only one down, but then he sticks another person with the Semtex. And, you know, that, when you get stuck with a Semtex, a Semtex, you only have like a split second to realize that you shouldn't go towards your teammate. He ended up dodge rolling right into the chalk and helped squashy get a double there. It's just great yep. play. Will we see some different strats coming out? from the side of pink miss this time now that they'll be on the defensive side squashy could still come out with the lancer on attack we did see some great smoke usage we could see that on the attacking side you can go double smokes with kind of a, a lancer dahlia setup have a chalk out there for the flashbangs into the smokes as well it'll be interesting but i am excited oh man i never mind i thought we were gonna get a dima we did see two towns being hovered over ruggy will be the talent player for the blue squad at the moment and i like bringing out the talent on the defensive side it's something where you know he can even go towards that a site alone at times throw a dart check two different corners at the same time he can look through tunnel he can look through cave and, and put the dart on the opposite one that he's not staring at so he can kind of cover more ground by himself in that condensed area of that a bomb site while the rest of his team kind of plays towards b which is a lot harder to retake if you don't start off in those positions to begin with 100%. Now, I like this comp because they have double intel on defense, so they are going to be able to make plays on this defensive side where this offensive team isn't going to be able to know why they're making them. Let's say they're able to call out two mid. They can hit a quick flank if they already see the other two long. It's many plays that you can make just by having all that intel. C4 is going to be coming out, not able to get him as he's leaving one, one HP. So close. 
Now, the thing that I do some. not like about this comp is that they do not have a res. So they don't have a revive character. They have no Dahlia and no Saint. So if they go down, everything is going to be a hand res. Now, they do have the lifeline eventually on the Seeker. They have the fast res on the Vi and the Kestrel. Talon, no fast res on him. So it's going to be interesting to see how they're going to be able to get these reses off as they need to win five more rounds without any revives. This is going to be a tough one. Yeah, I mean, not much in the way of tenacity or armor as well. But meanwhile, that's not helping out anything. The drone's going through that main doorway. He doesn't find anything from it. Dead Faces, though, is able to help the rest of his team throw out about everything there onto that objective. They still get the bomb planted through all that poison, incense, grenades, and drones, whatever else they were trying to throw through them. There was a lot of smoke util a lot of smokes that came out very early in the round, both on the B site and towards that middle. Squashy though does able to f to find dead faces there. And now look at this full bomb site control being taken. This is a retake that could potentially work out for the defensive side. But just as I say that Uzmob finds Zestro, that's an even trade out. One for one. Dahlia does go down, gets finished off, and it doesn't look like the retake will be successful but here as good They still need to get on the bomb. Still holding and... this. Bomb timer going off. Do they have someone on the bomb? Yes, they do. And Gagoon is not able to stop him. Wow. I'm not sure if Gagoon ran out of bullets. That's why I, I noticed that he lost the gunfight, but then I think he ran out of bullets, so he was just aiming at him. Ah, he had an open sight on the diffuser. He just couldn't finish. Sometimes just don't have enough bullets to make it happen. That was that was close. They sent, <laughs> there was two 1v1s that went down and the last guy hopped on the bomb. You love to see the team work to be able to do that perfectly. Uh, it just didn't work out. And uh, it just didn't work out on the offensive team's behalf. They weren't able to get him off the bomb. The defense played that perfectly on the retake and we got ourselves a 4-4 now. No res needed. And I talked about this last week. We saw the first ever 7-7 seven, seven on Hollows. And by the way, I love this placement of this Talon Dart because if he elects to go through mid and kind of go towards that L bend on the left side from behind them, he can do so effectively and he can know who's there. Smoke's coming out on the A site, though. It looks like it will be a push towards this A site. Kestrel still checking the B site for the time being. Looks like the rest of the team hasn't called for her help just yet. Maybe they think that there will be a rotation coming through. But look at the space being created right now. Squashy playing very aggressive inside of Cave. Just face tanking it pretty much. He can get shot from the left side of Crane onto the Seeker as well. And They and notice that there's three members inside the middle there. They are getting a couple shots on the bomb. Right. Still hasn't gone down. It looks like it's in Gagoon's possession over there. On the yeah. left side, right in front of the Vi, just waiting. Maybe that little aim down was the ping, saying, okay, we're good to go. Let's get that bomb set. Still no downs for either team. Bomb finally being planted. And now it's just it's on the defense to be able to come in and make plays for the retake as the offense is just going to hold this. And what's so interesting about this is that it almost felt like the defense wanted them to plant it. They weren't being aggressive at all. They were letting the Kestrel plant. They let them get their positioning. It seemed like their plan was to go for a retake. As... Oh, and look at this. Gagoon finds Rugi. He gets picked up by Kestrel and then instantly gets taken down once again. Dead Faces returns the favor onto Welsh Mania. And he knows that someone is still in cave trying to hold it. Zestro is able to find dead faces. Gagoon goes down. Dead faces gets finished off. It is a 2v3. And make that oh. a 2v1 now with the bomb going off. And another round goes to the attackers here. Baboon Gang taking a one point lead now. And it's been neck and neck. But Baboon Squad able to finally break through and get a successful bomb plant. This time it wasn't defused. I hope that they had bullets. It looked like they had enough ammo in their guns that time around to keep everyone off of that defuse. Oh, yeah. Big time. And right now, this is a very important round. This this round right here, if it doesn't go 5-5, five, five, if, it, if it goes 6-4, that is going to be detrimental for this defensive side because y you know that this offensive team is going to be more aggressive the more rounds that they get ahead of you simply because of the fact that you do not have a revive character and they do they can put their kestrel in positions that 
their Kestrel can't go into simply because they have no way of getting them up unless they hand res them. They've been trying to deal with that the best that they can. And up to this point, been able to uh, do pretty well up until this last round. So let's see how this defensive side is going to be able to handle this B push coming out. The Vi Poison is going to be coming out. Zestro is going to be getting it down with the nade on the Kestrel. They're going to have to go hand res that. The smokes came out on both angles there to get that bomb planted. It did successfully get planted. They lost the Dahlia on the side of Baboon Gang. And that is a huge pick because, once again, they don't have what they needed right there. As Kestrel goes down, they don't have the ability to res him without getting down on one knee. And they weren't even able to do so there. Uzmob with the bounce nade towards the Vi. And Squashy playing a totally different role here being the space deletion character as he is trying to not allow anyone to get onto this objective. Doesn't have to down anyone, just has to keep them at bay, and that's exactly what he's doing. Uzmob trying to make a play for this site, though, and he's not able to win that gunfight, but look at Squashy's awareness. Knows exactly where everyone is at whichever time he needs to know. He ends up dying to the bomb there, and he'll take that. Bomb goes off. He has 11 downs right now. I think about nine or ten of those came on the attack of uh, the defensive side when he was playing the Lancer. But again, playing the Vi now, not allowing people on that objective after he gets that bomb planted. He's the bomb planter with tenacity. He's playing fantastic right now. 100%. Getting those bombs down, zoning off with the poisons. He's doing absolutely great. Now, 6 4 advantage on offense. Now, the question is do you go back to where you're comfortable at B, where you just won? Do you go back to where you won the round previously at A? This is this is where the defense is kind of in a quandary because they just lost at both sites back to back. Oh. So now you feel like you have to defend both sites better. So this round by itself is going to be extremely hard because you're probably going to see a 2-2 coming out of the defense, which it kind of looks like they are setting up right now as two players are heading toward the B. One is going to be hard at A and one is going to be watching that up top mid. Looks like this is going to be a slower B push starting out as two are going to be working this long angle in the Seeker and the Vi and the Dahlia and the Kestrel going to be working this inner snake area while the Kestrel is trying to make sure that the Kestrel above her isn't going to be flanking. I believe that she did see Dead Fax's arm, so I believe that they do know that this Kestrel is up there. That door is now open, so the rotation to A can be extremely fast. Now, this is the thing about opening this door on the offensive side. A lot of people feel like it's a defensive play to open it at the start of the round if you're able to. But honestly, if you're able to get the bomb down, now you can see the bomb from middle. You can protect it from more places than just just a cave and up top. Now, there's Another thing about the door is the bomb. Can... You can start to kind of condition the defense, you know, you hear that audio cue of the door opening and you're saying, okay, they're rotating to A or, you know, you can kind of fake them out with that. But there are no fake outs here. They did plant the bomb on A and now they're trying to push in. Welsh Mania finds dead faces. Gagoon found a double with the C4. One of those being himself, early boy, was able to take out Gagoon completely, but he fell shortly after. Squashy goes down at the hands of Uzma, but Welsh Mania finishing off two. It's a 1v2, and Zestro's able to finish it off with a Riptide he's picked up off the ground. He's able to get this revive onto Squashy for the extra cash in the pocket as well. Seven to four with game point now in hands of Baboon Gang. And again, we expected Frenchies to be here. We expected, we expected the, the French team versus the European Baboon Gang. We are getting Pink Miss, some team that you know we're not too familiar with. We have seen Early Boy and Ruggy just a little bit, both outside of CMGs and in some of the, the you know the the CMGs during the week. None of the 10Ks, uh, most notably, but they're starting to to get a name for themselves. Here they are on the broadcast, and they were showing up pretty large. Now they're starting to fall back. What do they need to do though? Yeah, honestly, you got to win four rounds in a row. That's what you need to do if you want to win this map. Uh, but it's going to be hard to do that. Honestly, I'm surprised that this team hasn't went for the, the flank. Honestly, they have the Talon Dart. Ooh, that's a nice C4 going to be coming out of Rugi down in Gagoon. The trade is going to be coming in, though. It looks like that, that revive is going to be coming in. It's going to be a hand res, though. Hand res nice. indeed, but helping hand again for the Vi can help them get up just a little bit quicker than the normal revive. Utility and lethals coming out from both sides. And now look at Zestro getting caught out very early there. 
And the defense is pushing very aggressive, and that's off the back of that talent dart that they can have. Sensor Drone also comes out as well, but that's it. They were able to clean up the rest of the kills they needed there. They will survive for another round here as the defuse will come through. Seven to five will be the score. And uh, they're, they're, they survive by the skin of their teeth, but they're still here on Hollows. Oh yeah, three more rounds to go. Now they are on defense. You would think that this is a defensive-sided map. Now with the rogues that they have, I like I said, I feel like this intel, they need to use it more to their advantage. That round, they were able to use it a lot more to their advantage. The Talon took control of the mid. He won the trade, was able to kill Gagoon, finish off that Kestrel link, which is... Which is which is massive because then uh, then the Dahlia, she's gonna have to hand res everyone else. <laughs> it's that simple. And now it's kind of a, a guessing game for the defense. They still have that talent dart to give them the intel they need on that B site through the the B short. I guess you would refer to it as. But at the same time, you know we've we've had successful bomb plants go off on the B site for gag, baboons gang and also on the a site as well so they kind of have the ability to go towards both sites here they can play with that middle door once again like i said this time they can open it and just use that audio cue as kind of a, a distraction c4 on top that does do some damage there but it won't find any downs that's no longer available i believe that was from the talent on the defensive side as he's the only one with a c4 available there smokes did come out poisons from the defensive side as well and they're going to have to kind of slow their roll if they want to get that bomb planted. And it looks like the rotation will come through towards that A site. By now, the door could be open, so they have that sort of fast uh, highway kind of. It's kind of like taking the toll road. They paid the price at A at the B site. Now they can go towards that A pretty easily. And Actually, that door is not fully open yet, so... Maybe they're just stalling, seeing if they can wait for it to open. See if there's a, a, a mistake made by the defense, and that might be the one they're looking for. Drones on the left side of main, all the way through that little cubby. Dead Faces throws his drones out as well, and that gets squashy, finishes him off. Tenacity no longer on that rogue in Vi. Tried to get the bomb planted, did succeed in that, and look at this, turning the corner, finds one oh. talent. Vi turns the corner, oh. Welsh Mania and Zestro, Finishing this game off very convincingly. Just kill after kill there to finish it off. It wasn't looking good when the bomb carrier went down. But luckily that bomb was planted successfully. And then after that, they had to push. They had to get aggressive. Remember, if that bomb goes off or they all die, they lose the game. That's exactly what happened because of the great gunplay coming out from Baboon Gang. As they take game number one here. That was absolutely massive. You know, Welsh and Zestro going with the cross right there. You love to see it. Able to take out all four players. They were in a 3v4 and did a 2v4 by themselves. Man, you love to see the team shots coming out, man. You love to see it. You love to see it. That was an intense map number one. You know, 8-5. Let's see how the strikeout goes, man. It's going to be interesting. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people, they, they were... I mean, and us too. We know who Ruggy is. We know who Early Boy is. Early Boy kind of started off very, uh, you know, he wasn't as strong at the beginning, right? He started to pick up his gameplay. But overall, I mean, Squashy coming in on the Lancer, coming in on the Vi, was making some beautiful plays on both sides of the ball, I guess you could say, both on the defense and the attacking side there. Dead Faces, as you can see in the replay here, was trying to make some plays. Ruggy as well. But man, the play is coming out from Squashy on the Lancer, especially the play where she snuck all the way around A, got behind them on the defensive side. They had no idea. And again, the patience from them to just wait. And then kind of like a tiger coming out of the, the grass to pounce on her prey, being that Dahlia, and then finishing off that knock. Not just getting her down, but being able to finish her off with the Semtex. Great play there. And like you said, that's the revive you really want to stay alive. And he did exactly what he needed to do. That gave his team the advantage, which he did very often in that matchup. Oh, yeah. You love to see it, man. Just some awesome gameplay coming out. Shout out to the new side. You know, we haven't seen a lot of these players that are on the side of Pink Mist. You know, we've seen some of the people from Baboon Gang before in these 10K qualifiers. But it's definitely good to see some new competition, you know, some new faces in this scene. You know, you love to see it.
Yeah, I mean, you're new to the CMG broadcast and you were asking me before, like, you know, we should watch this game and this game. And I said, whoa, slow your roll, man. There's there's like a there's a method to this madness, right? We don't do, you know, as much as we love all the great players that show up every week, you know, we can't watch them all the time. We've got to show some love to some of those up and coming players, some of the new guys making a name for themselves in the scene. And, and now, I mean, Baboon Gang, they win this first game here on hollows but again pink miss making a name for themselves i mean they already made a name for themselves beating frenchies right both of us expected frenchies to make it to this round to make it into this matchup we thought we'd be saying frenchies versus baboon gang but we were wrong there and i'm glad we were wrong right i love being an analyst in esports because when i'm right it's boring when i'm wrong it gives me so many different things that I can attack as an analyst. What can I do to figure out what happened? Okay, I thought that team was going to win with all these reasons why, but now I get to dive into this side of the story and figure out why this team won. And we're starting to see why Pink Miss was able to beat out Frenchies. They have a very solid core to their roster. They didn't start off as hot like Early Boy or, or Ruggy, uh, but, you know, they started to pick it up. It's just Baboon Gang, they picked it up a little bit harder uh, towards those later rounds, especially on the attacking side, just the flexibility they showed to be able to go towards that B site, towards that A site, pretty much at will, the way they use that door. I mean, that door, I, by the time it opens, you can have a whole dinner, right? You can eat a three course meal by the time that thing opens. And they were able to effectively use that in their strategy. Yeah, and the interesting thing was, is that was an 8-5 score on Demolition, right? So if you go back and look at Pink Miss versus Frenchies when they played them, Pink Mist actually beat Frenchies on both of the demolitions to advance to this round. So they did lose the strikeout against Frenchies, but they showed that they are definitely a solid demolition team able to take out Frenchies in both demolitions. That said a lot by itself. So I was definitely expecting a close, close match, and we definitely got one. That, that was an intense one right there. That's a, a very important uh, thing to, to note is demolition. In a best of three, there's two of them. There's only one strikeout. You'd be the best strikeout team in the world and still lose demolition. It was eight to five in that last game. If you're just joining us, Baboon Gang being able to be the victors in game one on hollows. That was a demolition. We're going to a strikeout. It can't be eight to five here, right? Because you only need three rounds to win. So it is a, you know, basically a best of five if it goes two, two to overtime. But we do have the bans available for this map. And I was going to say Anvil was banned in that last game. We could possibly see that happen once again. But this time it's Lancer and Fixer. So Pink Miss, they don't want to have to deal with Squashy, it looks like. Strikeout is also a pretty good reason to run Lancer, even on Windward. I wouldn't say it's like a super pick on Windward, but just being able to dodge roll for the reload, you get to respawn. So you get your Semtex back, you get some smokes back, and she can kind of just be that slave rogue that you want kind of like a kestrel just have that slayer mentality and then on the other side fixer of course rome we all know even with the dead eye being the the preferred weapon for him i, I mean you can even argue now that we saw people like saint tk and net j in last week's 10k main event mm -hmm. going crazy with the sniper but of course the dead eye being able to just walk through smokes that is a big deal yeah 100% and that is something that uh is probably going to be uh probably going to be a staple in Rogue Company. It's either you're going to ban Fixer or learn to play with him as uh, as he is just so good at getting the control of these certain areas even in respawn able to get that smoke play back. Now I do like the Lancer ban coming out of Pink Mist not only because of how, what Squashy was able to do with them on Hollows on the Lancer, but because of what he was able to do on Factory in their last match that they played. So I don't know if Pink Mist watched their Factory strikeout that uh, Baboon Gang played, but Squashy played the Lancer on that strikeout on Factory as well, and he was a factor, as he did top frag on that map as well. So it's an interesting bands coming out. I'm interested to see what Squashy is going to be playing. It looks like he's going to be locking in the Anvil. Now that's going to be good for zoning. Not too many doorways to be blocking off on, uh, on Windward, though, so... You know, we are going to have the uh, the flash immunity, though, against Early Boy, so none of his flashes are going to be doing anything to the Dahlia or the Anvil if the if the Dahlia decides to link to the Anvil over the Chalk or the Kestrel, maybe round one. You never know, man. It's, it's going to be interesting to see uh, who the Dahlia links to. She's got three very good options for this first round.
Yeah, I mean, lots of options there. All three, like you were mentioning, for her to be able to either get extra money, get some flashbang immunity. I would probably go with the extra money in that first round. But again, it's strikeout, so you can get a primary to start off with. You can even just go for lifeline if your heart so chooses uh, to do so. But, I mean, look at the other side here. Scorch. On a map like Windward, it's still effective in Strikeout because a lot of these fights are happening close range. And with Scorch, you kind of have that Slayer mentality with her as well. Try to force yourself into close quarter com combat situations. Vi, Scorch having the incense in their kits as well. No incense on the side of Pink Mist, so you don't have to worry about those. You were talking about shields going up in doorways. That's not always the game plan. It does work out when it does, but sometimes you just want to block off certain angles or line of sights, and already coming through, Zestro finds Ruggie, and it's a two-man push up mid, and it does not work out as Uzmop dead faces. They all go down. Early Boy, the only member of Pink Miss to get a kill himself, but he goes down pretty easily after. And they're able to get all the revives, so not a life dropped yet. As they, there they go. The Chalk is going to be full killed for their first death. Now, Squashy was able to get great anvil positioning with his anvil shield to get a lot of this early time. And right now, this Dahlia is going to be top cannons, just trying to hold it down for her team. As Squashy and this Dahlia are going to be team shotting the Scorch. And the Scorch is going to be going down as well. Zestro is going to be taking out Rugi in the middle. And it's still a solid hold as now they are up. Eight lives just absolutely slaying out as they've only dropped two lives themselves. Another anvil shield going to be coming out a little bit further up to get even better positioning. And that's just going to make it even harder for this squad. To oh my goodness, Squashy with the two piece on the anvil. And yeah, right now they have just complete map control of this site. And I do not see how this squad is going to be able to retake this site with this setup. Yeah, I mean, that seems to be just the M.O. for Squashy here. No matter what he plays, Vi, Lancer, and now Anvil added to that rogue pool. Just going crazy with whatever he has. He's got an LMG with 60 in the clip, and he's putting it to good use. Welsh finds one with the MXR. Zestro finds another one, this time not playing a support role. It's Welsh once again on that Dahlia. Zestro finds another one. He does go down. He'll get picked up pretty quickly from the Kestrel. And already zero lives remaining. Zero lives remaining. I forgot my English there for a moment. Uh, but they're trying to fight back here. It's a pretty dominant side. And that's something we see a lot on Strikeout on Windward, especially for this A objective. It's very hard to break back into that. That's the site where a lot of people, they either play very fast and it goes against them, or they play very slow and methodical. This time around, though, they were the ones playing fast and it didn't work out for them. They were matched by Baboon Gang there. 100%. Eight downs now. for Zestro. That's a lot of money in the bank for the Kestrel after round one. Yeah, I was going to say this is interesting because winning the first round so heavily and having the Dahlia linked to the Kestrel in that first round. Right now, this Dahlia is definitely going to have Lifeline. She's going to decide to link with the Anvil this time as she's already got her money up. And now she's just going for that flash immunity to be able to slay out even more. And uh, right now, this squad in Baboon Gang is scaling very, very quick. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure if Fast Res is going to be coming out on the, on the side of Pink Mist. It's going to be interesting, but that might be a decider in this round by itself is the lifeline. So we're going to have to hope that the Dahlia on the other side does have it. And right now, the spawn yeah, point is going to be though, top the... middle market. This time, though, the, the objective is a little bit more open as itself to where there's a lot of different angles you can play, right? You can come through mid, as we see Welsh Mania take out dead faces, kind of just drop a smoke on top of himself. He's trying to see if he can get this res onto Zestro. Did link to the anvil for this round. Meanwhile, a Scorch being linked to from the enemy Dahlia of Pink Mist. I don't know if he knows there's no incense on the other side, so he's not immune to fire, but he is trying to keep his Scorch alive to keep those fire bullets coming as often as possible. Gagoon finds another one. An incense from Ooze Mob finds Welsh Mania. But once again, that revive is going to come through. And this is something we've seen from a lot of the top teams. Cute Hamster, especially. They just know how to keep each other alive. Whether it was Bop in that lineup or Ink, they always are able to get each other up. Right, Turtle, though, that kind of worked against them because they weren't playing as revive heavy 
And that's the reason why they weren't able to win as effectively as they have been in the past. Ruggy finds Zestro, and now the push coming from Pink Mist, but Gagoon and Squashy, and now Welsh getting in all the action together as they were able to stop that push. It is a neutral site for the time being. Uzmob versus Welsh, but the teammates from Pink Mist coming in to help. Another incend takes him down once again. And my man Dahlia, he's playing with fire. Yes, able to walk through that fire. Now, that, that's an interesting, interesting idea. We were wondering why she was linked to the Scorch, but there are two mollies on the offensive, on, on her team. So if, if they're able to throw those mollies in positions, the Dahlia can just walk up in the fire and stand on the fire and get get better positioning just like the scorch can so it's actually kind of smart you know people would think that you know the best thing to do is link with the chalk for that extra health able to reload but uh, i'm not not actually mad at the scorch link here i i'm not mad at it either because uh, you know going back to that type of uh that mentality where you're kind of like the slayer right you have chalk you have scorch you have Lancer, you know, you have those characters that are kind of aggressive. They get in your face. They want to be in your face. They succeed when they're in your face. You know, the Scorch, the closer she is with an SLC, whether she has that ability popped or not, it's going to be more deadly than if she's far away, right? So like a Dahlia with an MXR, she doesn't have to be close to you. She can hit you very hard from a distance. Granted, there is some damage fall off once you go over a certain amount of uh, you know, legroom there, but still. 100%, but we got ourselves a straight up 2v2 right now. As Zestro takes down early boy, is able to full kill him. We got ourselves a straight up 2v2. Scorch and Vi versus Dahlia and Kestrel. No res gonna be on either side. Gonna be a hand res if anyone does go down. Smoke gonna be coming out, and the push is gonna be coming in. The Scorch gonna be down in the Kestrel. See you later. And now it is going to be only this Dahlia, and she's going to have 30 seconds to retake. This site is going to be on that staircase. Was able to get down there. Now, do, do they know? I don't believe that they do. And Welsh is going to be trying to crawl around, it looks like, to the other side. And is this rat play going to pay off? Oh, my goodness. This could be a massive play. He's got 15 seconds. He does have to get inside. Is this Scorch going to get caught out? Yes, she is. And now how much HP does Welsh have? He has got 60. Is he going to be able to win this 1v1? He's pre-firing it. He's coming up to the box. But no, Dead Faces is going to win the big 1v1. Almost a massive play coming out of Welsh Mania right there. Wow. Well, almost only counts in uh, horseshoes and hand grenades there. There are a lot of hand grenades going out, though. In Road Company, that is. Not in this game. You do have a bounce nade from Zestro, a normal nade from Welsh Mania, and a Semtex from Chalk, but it wasn't enough. It is all even at one apiece. And, Rome, something we see a lot in Strikeout is they kind of, very early on in the game, they go at each other very fast, right? They want to get aggressive. They want to be fast, and then... When the tickets start to go down and then you start to lose some rounds, you know, one or two, you start to slow down your gameplay and say, okay, guys, we need to treat this a lot more cautiously because we're losing lives a little bit too fast. Shield goes up now. The Vi Poisons came out inside the bar as well, and the fight is heading towards cannons. One, two. Go Welsh Mania Gagoon, but an even trade out on the other side. Never mind the advantage in favor of baboon gang and now early boy trying to make some plays but of course squashy is there to shut that down the shields up once again the aps's are down the lmg's out and baboon gang looking to zone out this team yeah and squashy just went absolutely massive first four downs of this round for their team going to be coming out of squashy he's able to get all four players of pink mist in that top cannons area that's an absolutely goaded play coming out of him let's see how they are going to be able to retake this site as currently baboon gang does have control of it dead faces is going to be on the tree is going to be taken out by the simtex player is going to be flanking that's going to be evan boy he's going to be taken out zestro right now rugi is going to be trying to get this angle as they are currently down six lives Zestro is going to be able to take out two. Zestro taking out three. But finally, Mob able to take out Zestro on the backside. Molly going to be coming out. Gagoon going to have to roll away. Anvil Shield coming out. That's more zoning. And it looks like they're going to be going back to the setup that won them that very first round with the Anvil Shield put in that such an aggressive place. You'll love to see it coming out of this squad. 
Also, putting that shield there, you know, you can not only just get aggressive with it, but by the time that immunity off of respawn is gone, they're pretty much in your face. You can see them. You can see where they're trying to position themselves as Scorch kind of just jogging in place. Maybe she's waiting for some intel. Maybe she's just trying to make some noise so the enemy thinks that she's flanking. Welsh finds one, but he goes down immediately after. Another one gets traded out between the two teams, but walking through with the Riptide is Zestro. As he's able to help finish some off. Only three people standing. Scorch, though, she's looking invincible right now. That might pay off for them. It's like a little bit of a crash coming through. If she comes back at the perfect timing, she could probably make some clutch plays. The enemy team will just forget about her. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. But just the interesting maybe, but thing is this is a 3v3. We, we had someone disconnect on both sides. This is going to be interesting. It, it's an even game right now. Yes, Pink Mist and Baboon Gang both have one out right now. Nine respawn tickets available. Now make that eight as the Dahlia will have to come back through. Anvil Chalk still standing, however, and now making a push through this objective. Dead Faces finds a double himself. Mm. Welsh did find Ruggy with the grenade, but will it be enough? That window's been broken on the shield. The respawns are now coming through. Only three members standing. And I think one of them's not even really in the game right now, being the Scorch, so make that two. Look at the flank coming in through Welsh all the way around, making a push through what normally is that A site in demolition through the mid cut. Off Lemons with the Semtex doesn't find anything except for a couple damage hit markers coming out from the D40C. Now making a play towards the objective. A little bit of a neutral site starts to get capped by blue now, and they have to move off. Ruggy finds Welsh. Five tickets. They are surviving. Look at this. Another one from Squashy. Is it enough? No, sir. Only two tickets remaining now, and still zero for the side of Pink Mist. Rome, they are hanging on by a thread in round number three, trying to take the lead here in game number two. Yeah, and this is just a massive turnaround. Like, they, they were ahead six, seven, eight lives, and once both players disconnected, it became a 3v3, and they were able to get the better of them, able to hold it down through six lives straight. Absolutely massive plays, but now it's going to come down to who wants it more, as this is a dead even game. Zero tickets remaining on both sides. Oh, my Early goodness. Boy well, is going to be going down. Kestrel ult going to be coming out, going to be finishing him off, and there they go. So they are going to be securing the round after all. Whew, that was a close one. That was a scare for Baboon Gang, but they are able to come out on top. I would call that more than a scare, man. They were up nine tickets to zero. Even with a disconnect on both sides, it's still an even 3v3 fight. I believe, you know, those members are back in the game. They're ready to go. It's back to being yes, 4v4 sir. here, which is what we love to see. But at the same time, nine tickets to zero, and they were able to go through all nine from the side of Pink Mist. Just great play from them. They were able to hang on. Yeah, they lose that towards the end, but... Remember, around before that, they were stuck in a 2v2 with no respawns available, and they were able to win that. So just, you know, clean up those little m mistakes that they made in that last round. They should be able to tie this one up at two apiece. Right now, though, that Boon Gang, they lead by one with only one more round to win. It is strikeout. You only need three. Unlike Demolition, yeah, and... where you need those eight. And big fights coming out through that middle section off of Fountain already. Remember, the objective is on the market. It's on the wagon. C4 coming through. Doesn't find anything from that. Strikeout, though, you don't have to be on the objective to be capturing it. So once they get that, they go through. Welsh finds two off of the aggressive push from his teammate, who ended up going down. Early Boy finds one. And his teammate, Zestro, kind of... Just went through it. Squashy there with the MLX Maw to mow down someone as well. But the objective was still held by the side of blue. That Boon Gang still in control, but they aren't in the lead of tickets. But that's okay if they can make some plays here. They do find one, finish him off. Zestro, with just one health to his name, has to try and hide. Squashy, Gagoon, they find one apiece. Zestro finds Ooze Mob, and that's another complete wipe for Pink Mist.
Yeah, and that's massive because it gives them time to get the position they want. They have one guy gold, one guy watching this middle staircase. His job is just to buy time down, call out, do as much as you can while your team's going to be able to win a 3v1 on the other side. And the melee is going to be coming out from Gagoon down in Rugi. Beautiful stuff. My goodness, you'll love to see the Katana plays. Yeah, we don't really get to see him as often anymore. $5,000 to just buy the melee, and it only does 75 damage to the body. A lot of people get an armor. I mean, uh, Toughen Up is a perk out there as well that you can get on some rogues now, like Trench and Seagrid. I mean, she even takes less damage without it through her shield. Or actually, you can't even melee through the shield at all anymore. So just, you know, melees not as common as we used to see vi poison comes out zestro did find another one on the backside but he got traded out now squashy finds one ooze mob early boy dead faces they all find one a piece and that's a wipe it is nine respawns available for the side of baboon gang they uh, just need to win this round to close out this game and this matchup can they do so or does the zero respawn miracle happen once again? And then are they able to finish it off this time? Lots of grenades and damage coming through on to early boy, but he finds a double help from Ruggy on that top market side through the, oh my goodness. I can't even finish the sentence before early boy finds another one onto Welsh and in a blink of an eye, that's a full team white four up, four down, five re respawns. Welsh finds one with the grenade, and finally, they're able to take one out. They down another, they down another, take out another. It's one member standing. Can Baboon Gang close it out? Yes, they can. Gagoon was able to help finish that one off, coming from behind on the bottom of market. And finally, they don't throw it, so to speak. Nine tickets in their favor. Almost did it again with a full team wipe coming through, but... They uh, respawned, regrouped, recollected their thoughts, and were able to close it out. Baboon Gang beats Pink Miss 3-1 to one in that second game. Strikeout on Winward. But it's not just winning that game. They won game number one as well. So they move on in this best of three. 2-0 over Pink Mist. And what is even nicer about winning that match right there is that they just not only guaranteed themselves a couple points, they also guaranteed themselves some money, all right? So they definitely got that top eight placing secured for the qualifier, which is big. And now they have the pleasure of going up against Cute Hamster next round. It's going to be interesting. Yeah, Cute Hamster, that's a tall, that's a very tall uh, order to have to deal with. I mean... Oh man, cute hamsters. They've been looking really good. They did make a roster change as we noted earlier before. Cute hamster though, whoo man. They've won every single 10K I believe, but let's go ahead and just take a look at some of these replays, man. There was some really good ones. I know it's strikeout and there's a lot of plays happening all at once, especially, but again, Welsh Mania with the MXR on that Dahlia making some very massive plays, not just with the grenades in his hand, but also the revives that were coming through and the MXR shots that he was able to get out from both a distance and up close. Oh yeah, Dead Faces really showed out today to me. Even though his team did lose, he definitely had a whole lot of nice highlights. Welsh Mania especially, he always has highlights every tournament. And then you got Gagoon with the nasty melee, able to hold everyone off. He's got that toxicity on the melee able to get the dahlia just beautiful plays and then squashy whether it was on lancer whether it was on anvil whether it was on vi this whole series squashy was an absolute unit by himself you love to see it man you love to see it I, i'm just so excited because every week the matches get better and better even if it's a 2-0 they're still very close there's still some very clutch moments in there uh from round to round no matter if it's demolition or strikeout but once again, Baboon Gang taking down Pink Miss 2-0 in our first matchup of the day. We do have another one coming up very shortly, just waiting on the winner between Crack is Whack and Stiff Snake. I know, I love the team names that are coming out from these players <laughs> each and every week. Uh, the winner of that will end up going up against Brave Sheep. I believe that'll be our next matchup. So again, 
We're still waiting on that. Don't forget to tweet at us and follow us on Twitter, by the way, at CMG underscore Rogue on Twitter. Make sure you smash that follow button. I think it's above me on Twitch. Make sure if you're feeling generous, hit that subscribe. Make sure you follow Rome on Twitter as well. And, I mean, we've got some exciting action coming up shortly right after this break.